Hi again then guys and welcome to episode 19 of Super Sports, the review series for Gran Turismo 6's selection of vehicles which are definitely beyond just a sports car, but not necessarily a full-on supercar. And one of the advantages of these types of vehicle is generally the value for money, because supercars are often very, very expensive. They're also very good, but very expensive nonetheless. One of the advantages of super sports cars is they're generally a lot cheaper. This car is the perfect example of that. It's the Dodge Viper, one of the most iconic and long-standing sports cars of the Gran Turismo series. I'm not sure if it was featured on the first game, because I never played that, but I know at least from Gran Turismo 2 onwards it's been a staple of the GT franchise. And for good reason. It's a car which, on the surface of things, could quite easily be passed off as ridiculous. A car which is essentially a Hot Wheels toy in its concept, which, on the surface of things, seems to be the kind of car which is purely made for arrogant people who want to just boast about numbers. They want to be the person who owns the car with the biggest engine in the room because that's all that matters to them. And you could quite easily assume that that is all the Viper's about. I mean, it's a truck engine in a sports car. That is what it would make you assume. But there are many misconceptions about this car. For one thing, it's not just a truck engine slapped into a sports car. It's actually reworked before it's put into the car by Lamborghini. It's also most certainly not just a straight line machine. It is a very capable straight line machine, but to assume that this is purely a dragster with a number plate would be a shortfall, because it's not. This car happens to be one of the most competitive sports cars in motorsport ever made, which is very impressive considering that it doesn't have anywhere near the rich history, especially the rich racing history, of its main rival, the Corvette. But despite not having that history, it's still a massively competitive all-round track car in various forms of motorsport over the years, and it still continues to be. Now, for Viper purists, you probably prefer the older models, such as this one. I personally prefer the older Vipers to the newer ones. I don't dislike the newer cars, I just prefer the more classic Viper shape. My personal favourite Viper actually isn't on the game. It was on Gran Turismo 2, but it's never been featured since, and that was the original Viper RT10. I love the look of that car. I like its simple form, none of the aerodynamic hodgepodge all over the place, just a simple, clean look. Pretty much like a Hot Wheels toy. This car, though, is a very good-looking machine. Now, there are two versions. There's the Premium 99 model, and or the Premium 02 model, I should say, and the non-Premium 99. This is the Premium model here. It costs 90,000 credits, so it's very good value for the spec, and the non-premium is the cheaper model at 78,000 credits. Now, if you're looking purely for performance, and you don't really care whether it's a Viper or not, you're probably better off going for the non-premium, because it gives you pretty much the same spec for a lower price. However, it's to be noted that you cannot repaint that car. This car, though, is for the fans of the Viper. It's a premium, you get that fully detailed interior, better sound, slightly better performance and spec, and it's just a nicer car overall, especially visually. Now, speaking of spec, that 8-litre V10 engine can be tuned with the aid of a supercharger to well over 1,100 horsepower and almost 1,100 pound-feet of torque. Now that on its own would probably make you assume it's a pure straight line machine. Combine that with a front engine rear wheel drive chassis and a, an overall weight that only weighs 1,255 kilos and it sounds like it would be an absolute straight line monster. Which it is. However, it's not just a straight line monster. This car is phenomenal around the track and Possibly the most surprising thing about it is how forgiving the handling is. It's a remarkably begin beginner-friendly car. It doesn't constantly wheel spin or spin out around corners like you'd probably expect it to. It doesn't handle like a hot rod. It handles like a seasoned car 
that's had decades of experience put into it. Which, really, it has no right to handle that well. That should be reserved only for the Corvette, because of how long it's been around. This car, though, has done a remarkable job of jumping onto the scene and almost completely dominating it within a very few years. Now, I can understand why people wouldn't like the Viper. It is a bit of a hot rod overall in its image. It's not a hot rod in its ability, but in its image, kind of. But, if you're looking for a strong, very, very strong all-round super sports car for a very low price, you'd be hard-pressed to find a better one than the Viper, especially the Viper GTS. So, that's it for this episode. I'll see you guys next time, and as always, thanks for watching.